Hey there, Tolkieners. I'm Danny J, of course. And I'm Joel Ann, and we are... Keep on Tolkien. And uh, thanks for tuning in today for this uh, special presentation. Special content, special content. Beep, 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 beep. This is bonus content. You didn't even ask for it. Bonus content. Yeah, check out our... So this is to accompany our episode. Uh, at, that would be episode 69, where we... Uh, talked about visiting the Hagerty Museum of Art in Milwaukee, in Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So back in October, uh, Danny and I, we went and visited the Art of the Manuscript exhibit at oh Hagerty Museum of Art. Oh, Lord, was it amazing. Oh, my God. So this was an exhibit that uh, essentially has a whole bunch of Tolkien's own handwritten manuscripts. Yeah. Things that he touched, smelled, taste, tasted. Yes. So there were, well, there were actually some manuscripts that also inspired Tolkien, too. Yes, that, too. So that, that, that was, was really also cool. very cool, yeah. Yeah. So uh, while photography was expressly forbidden, we decided to mic up for this experience. Yeah. We don't know if that's specifically allowed either, but you know what? We did it anyway. We done gone did it, and you guys will get to experience it with us right now. And that's what this is. We uh, There was some horrible background noise for a while, but we did our best to slice this into something that... That is listenable to the ear. Yeah, so have fun uh, listening to us react. There were some amazing pieces in this exhibit. Yes, yes. Enjoy, guys. Enjoy. Hey there, guys. We're at the Hagerty Museum of Art in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Say hello, Joel. Hey, guys. Oh, this is going to be great. We're about to see some real incredible shit. What do we got first? Rooted Works. So this is much more extensive than I would have thought it was going to be. I'm super yeah, excited yeah. about this. There's, it's a whole lower floor, right? That's what they're saying. Yeah. There's just transcripts everywhere on the walls, in these cases. So these are old manuscripts that Fired Tolkien? Is that what we're looking at right now? Tolkien's literary and visual output was indelibly tied to his work as a scholar of medieval languages. Yeah. This section highlights medieval works that manifest this connection within Tolkien's work. Yeah, so it looks like things that he may have been inspired by. Sick, we got some inspirations here, guys. Most yeah. significantly, Beowulf. So you can only bail off, which comes up all the time on our podcast. All the time. Third way yeah. the Green Knight, of course. Mm -hmm. And Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. I love that. I love that book. This is going to be beautiful. Yeah, a lot of this reading I cannot... There are a lot of this writing I cannot read. Yeah. This is Beowulf, yeah, I cannot yep. read this. Here's some more Beowulf. That's some old English... Oh, here's one of his uh, pictures. Oh, is it smog? Really sucks, but you can't take photos here, guys. That's why we're doing this mic thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no photography allowed. So we're gonna just tell you what we see. Got some little lapel mics. Hopefully, you guys can hear us. So this watercolor was produced early in Tolkien's career at Oxford, where he lectured frequently in Beowulf. Tolkien employs watercolor creatively and confidently, creating the scaly texture of the dragon's body, largely without the use of ink contouring. It's a really beautiful picture of just yeah, a... Yeah, so you get real close to it, too, to really mm -hmm. see it. Wow. Yeah, this isn't just a... This isn't just an image on the internet, guys. This is real shit. There's no pixels. See, I, I, I guess I never give uh, Tolkien enough credit for how good of a fucking artist he was. Oh, well, they have QR codes to scan to learn more about the images. So we can have our phones out. We just can't take pictures. Can't take photos. Which technically, scanning a QR code is taking a photo, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> it's split not, hairs. not gonna split hairs here. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just happy we get to see this. Yeah. So this is a dragon. It's not uh, Middle Earth related. It looks like it's earlier just a than fun that. little dragon. Mm -hmm. That's really cool, though. That's cool. We got here. The amount of time it took to just handwrite all this shit. Dude. I know. And then imagine if you got like 50 pages in and then you get to a typo. Made an error? Yeah. We're looking at the some Cademan, hand. It's the uh, Cade, Cademan Manuscript of Anglo-Saxon Biblical Poetry. It's from 1927. 27, great year. 
Almost as old as I am. Almost as old as I am. Oh, please do not lean on cases as I'm just leaning all over this case. God damn, that's gorgeous. All of this. It all has terrible museum etiquette. I do. <laughs> So we're looking, at a, touch everything. we're looking at a really big book here. It's the Ellesmere Chaucer. Oh, nice. Or a reproduction, Reproduced rather. Reproduced from 1911. Well, this is gorgeous, though. All this hand-painted art and all this handwritten calligraphy. It's just nuts the lengths they used to go to. I wonder books like... You know, they always say, like, you go to chain Bibles. Back in the day, they used to literally chain the Bible in the church. Oh, so people couldn't steal the book? A lot of people accused the Catholics of being, like, they didn't want the proletariat to, like, know things. But oh. the real excuse was that them shits were expensive. Yeah. And if somebody swiped that... That's a huge book that someone yeah. had to write by hand. By hand, yeah. Ooh, what is this? What are we going to do? The latter half of the 18th century witnessed scholarly and popular enthusiasm for the history and mythology of Northern Europe. The important work of Paul Henry Mallet was translated into English by Bishop Thomas Parsi, so that must be what this is. Northern Antiquities. Yep, Bishop Percy. Or Beowulf. Okay, look at this one. That is intricate. The Tale of Beowulf. Sometimes king of the folk of the Wiedergeats. Is that what it says? Wow. William Morris. Calligraphic manuscript, 1870. Ink and gold leaf on parchment. From the University of Oxford. Wow. That is beautiful. Oxford, Oxford. Here begins the tale and tells of a man named Siggy. Story of the Volsungs and the Niblungs. 1871. Ink, watercolor, and gold leaf on paper. That's pretty beautiful. Oh, and he's even got like little figures written around the page in pencil. It's incredible. We got on the wall here. Oh my god, we got a family tree. Oof. I'm not sure, but it's an extensive tree, guys. Mm -hmm. I think we're still in the uh, pre-Tolkien yeah, content. We're, we have a, we have a, we're doing foreplay right now, guys. Yep, that's a little bit. A little build, little build up. Oh my god. What is this? This is a mess. Is this like a cipher or something? It's literally what it looks like. It's text written in up, across, and down. That's weird. What a guy. Let's see what we got in the main exhibit. Okay, part two. Records of ancient days. At the core of Tolkien's complex Middle-earth legendary is a simple notion. The history and mythology we read in books, like The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, are collected and told by Bilbo and Frodo. Oh yeah, I was talking about how there's actually Tolkien-like manuscripts so much there's manuscripts in the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, there's manuscripts within the manuscripts. Yeah. You see, for instance, in the letters from King Elisar to Samwise, from Gandalf to Frodo, as well as in the poem Bilbo Chants in Rivendell, the Book of Mazarbul, there's the Red Book of Western Ass, things like that. Yeah, he loves to include writings in his writings. Yeah, dude. Okay, okay so we're on to the tool. actual Tolkien stuff. That is clearly Kuzduul. What is this? Inscription on Balin's tomb. <gasps> the first manuscript oh from 1939. Holy shit. We're literally shit. looking at the first manuscript of the... Of Balin's tomb. Balin's tomb, which is like one of the most... So uh, it says I King Balin, Balin, Lord of Moria. Uh, King, son of Fundi, Lord of Moria. That's what it was. Yeah. Balin, son of Fundi, wow, Lord guys, of Moria. This is, this is incredible, you guys. 1939. Well, there it is. He, of course he wrote the translation right under it. Balin... Son of Hundin, Lord of Moria, Gandalf and Frodo, something is at him. Oh man, his writing is bad. Oh my god, Christopher, yeah. you are a saint for reading all this. A, uh... Oh my god, <laughs> his back page is like scribblings. He's got like certain things circled out. Oh my god, I can't even. 
We're literally looking at it, guys. We're looking at how this all came together into our favorite story. One page of the Book of Moria. Oh, I, the I, ima are the I imagine ones. that must be the Book of Bizarre Book. Yeah. Oh, yep, and right next to it, here's another page, and he has Moria scratched out, and he wrote Mazarbul. Page <laughs> of the Book of Mazarbul. Page oh, 1 from Book of Mazarbul, Book 2, Chapter 4. Oh, f he, so he, so this, what, just so you know what we're looking at, it is an image, it's a picture that he drew of, of a the page. Ruined, of the ruined book. Of a page. It's like a picture that he drew of a page that's all destroyed, and it's, it's really cool. It's really fucking cool. It's like guys. art with manuscript in it. It's, it's fun. It's just on some regular ass like notebook paper too. Yeah. That's fucking. Here's another version of it, page one from the Book of Miserable. And he did a bunch of these. Well, here's like a cutout. This guy, you guys. This guy. Another page of the Book of Moria crossed out, written Miserable above. This it. is the part where uh, that Ori wrote because he wrote he writes in the Elvish hand. Good catch, yep. yeah. This is where it switched, because we were looking at Curse up until now, now we're looking at Tengwar. When, when she was like, he needed to write fast, he wrote in Elvish, yep. right? Yeah, because like, it's like writing in cursive. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Oh, this is cool. The last page of the Book of Moria slash Look at that. Look at the oh, scroll yeah. at the end in Elvish. Oh yep. my god. And it trails off. They are coming. Oh, oh my god, you guys. This is really cool, and here's like a cutout version of it to look cool. Oh, why can't we take photos? I know. Suppose it ruins the paper. Mm -hmm, the light. Flash does at least. Oh, this is amazing. What is this? The King's Letter originated with the final scene for The Lord of the Rings that Tolkien was considered using, but rejected. 15 years after Sam returns to the back end, he surprises the children with an exciting letter. He has received from King Elisar in Gondor, announcing his intention to visit the border of the Shire. I never this is, knew about that. Dude, this, this, this got cut from, out. This is literally a letter from Aragorn to Sam. You guys, that's what we're looking at. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my god. Yeah. Aragorn, Telepintar, Strider, he puts in parentheses. That's oh so god. cool. Oh my god, you guys. The King's Letter, first version, with transliteration. Oh my god, we gotta get a hold of these two right on the Holy internet. shit. So on one so now we're looking at another thing. One side of the page is it written in uh Quenya, I'm assuming. Oh me, Cinderin. Could be Cinderin. I don't know what Aragorn would use as a casual. And on the back side is the uh English or common speech version. Aragorn Strider. Stone, King of Gondor, and Lord of the Westlands will approach the bridge. Bar Anduin on the eighth day of spring, or in the Shire, reckoning the second day of April. Well, if that was the second day of April, if it was on the first day, he could just say it was an April Fool's April joke. Fools, uh -huh. <laughs> Not actually coming. King's Letter, second version, early 1950s. Third version, early he 1950s. He held on to that all the way to the 50s, huh? He didn't decide to leave that until the end. Apparently, he really liked the idea of this King's Letter being I written really to Sam. I really like the how idea. Did this, how did this not make it into the... I mean, I guess the end of the book trails out quite a bit already, but... We could have added this. Epilogue. There was a Merry Messenger. Version A. A-O-A There was a Merry Messenger. Passenger. Oh yeah, this is the... Lay of A. I think this is a version of the Lay of A or India. Oh, there are so many versions of the Lay of A. i here today, you guys. The short lay. Oh, here's one that actually got typed on a typewriter. Type writer. Just got handwritten notes all around it. That's beautiful. That's so Aaron, cool. Arendil was a mariner that tarried in Alvernia, and he built a boat of lumber, fell from Nimbethel, Nimbethel to Jernia. I love that rhyme scheme. This is so cool. This is all... I'm assuming a lot of these are handwritten by him. I know some of them are pictures of things, but some of this is the real thing. This is crazy. It's the real deal. Just literally sacred artifacts. These are holy to us. What is this? He wrote this on the back of something else. I can see it. It looks like a receipt. <laughs> like an old Burger King receipt. SWN. 
Aaron Delenway. I didn't know that was a version of Arendel's name. Yeah, we've just got more versions of the Arendel the Mariner. Yeah, these are <clears throat> the short lay of Arendel, the short lay of Arendel. 1949, in, in the might of Feanorian swore, the unforgiven oath brought war until Vernian. This is incredible. This is amazing. You guys got to come check this out. Here's an early draft of his design for the dust jacket for the Hobbit. Oh yeah, That's it looks really just, cool. it literally just looks... Just like the yeah. first edition. Some of it's torn up, but... Uh, Oh, there's a little drawn smog up there. Oh, that's so cool. That is cool. Yeah, the coming of smog with the rising of the sun. Ah, oh, but there and back again. Why, Jay? I told you. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Oh, here's a couple like cover pages for the Hobbit and the Lord these of the Rings are, yeah. that he wrote by hand. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah, these handwritten. Cover Lord of the Rings. Pages. Here it is in Elvish, I believe. This has dwarvish ruins and elvish on it. Yeah. Section three, fair letters. Tolkien languages are visual entities as well as philological. Philological. Philological, I love that word. What do we got uh, here? Is it a list of some sort? John Mitchell Kimball on Anglo Saxon ruins, 1807 through 1857. This is written in 1840. There's stuff that looks almost exactly like this in the back of the the uh, book. Mm -hmm. Anglo-Saxon like ruins. Interesting. The Codex Runicus, produced in present-day Denmark around the year 1300, is a rare example of a late medieval manuscript written in ruins. That does look a lot like Dwarvish. It looks like Kurth uh, ruins. Sheet found in Tolkien's copy of Sir Gwain and the Green Knight. Oh, fun. Ink, pencil, ballpoint pen. On regular paper. I lend you a copy of this very great, uh, letter, which has no equal country. So it must have been a letter to a friend or something that he left in the book. Oh, we recognize this. This is Latin. Gloria and Excelsis Deo. Gloria and Excelsis Deo. And a Terra Pax and mini books. Some more samples of medieval scripts. A little bit of Latin. Here starts talking about more of the languages, Quenya and uh, Sindarin. Both written in Tangwar, by, devised by Feanor. Are these like. Uh, I think this is about Tangwar script. Tangwar character charts? Look at those guys. Yep. Straight up. Oh, look at this. Brunel, that's a name we recognize. Tangwar. The elder in language was spoken by the elderly. Kwekum, not Quenya. Interesting. This is incredible. Shop, shop, curious enough. Oh. spoke Elisar. What is this? This is a phenomenal amount of handwritten shit. I'm amazed. That is amazing. When Frodo heard the voice, he looked out, but he could see nothing through the thick and tangled branches. Suddenly, he felt a quiver in the gnarled tree trunk against which he was leaning. Before he could spring away, he was pushed, or kicked, forward onto his knees, picking himself up with the tree. Even as he looked, it took a stride towards him. He scrambled out of the way, and deep rumbling chuckle came down out of the treetop. Frodo? Came across the end. Must have come in, yeah, must I wonder if this is an early version of his interacting with uh, Old Man Willow. Yeah, that's what I was thinking at first. It was a well, Old Man Willow. Where are you, little beetle? Said the voice. If you don't let me know where you are, you can't blame me for treading on you. And please don't tickle my leg. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so this manuscript was not from the draft of Lord of the Rings. It was an early isolated narrative. Tolkien considered introducing a new character to the story, Treebeard. In this version, Treebeard was an evil giant who captures Frodo while he is searching for his lost companions. Interesting. Well, Christopher Reeves drew some of the maps for his father. Christopher Tolkien. 
Yeah. Very cool. Oh, this is going to be fun maps, guys. Oh, so this is a visualization of how time passes in Lorien. Did time pass differently in, in Elvish Lorien compared to outside world? Tolkien debated this question. Drawing on ideas from J.W. Dunes in Experiment with Time, 1927, he created diagrams to try to distinguish Lorien time from mortal time. Ultimately, weird. I never thought of that. isn't that weird? Ultimately, Tolkien abandoned any explicit distinction. He decided that time passes at the same rate in both places. Well, I mean, in the book, it kind of seems to pass differently, because they even say the moon is different. Yeah. Interesting. But it's interesting that he'd try to, like, visualize it yeah. in a diagram. Another chart illustrating Lorian time. Interesting. I think this is getting into the moon phases and stuff. Oh, yeah. Ah, it's crazy. Look at this timeline. He has all the events just written out in a timeline. September with dates. October Damn. with dates. Year. 1418. That's Shire Reckoning, though, right? It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Oh, he's got the Orient years in the Shire Reckoning. That's crazy. This is a huge timeline, guys. It's like multiple pages spanned out across yeah. the wall. Look at this! Yo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pages laying landscape next to each other across the wall. It's just a huge diagram. This is what I need to do to create my world. Oh my god. He's literally got you guys like laid out in charts. Mm -hmm. And he's got what's this going by the day and like what happened to each character on that day. Yeah, Company of the Ring, Gandalf, Gollum, and then Sauron and Allies. Dang, I wish we could take a picture of this for you. I know. I wish. I wish so. Bad. It's so detailed. Oh my god. This is insane. This is everything I wish I had. And every time we're researching stuff. If we had this at our disposal, bro. All the time. Wow. Men and friends, orcs and enemies, Gandalf and company. Frodo and Samwise. Men and allies, Gandalf. Others of the company. This is just nuts. I had no idea he did this timeline stuff like this. This is so extensive. Just wild. You gotta have your chronology down, guys. Timetable after the fall of Baradur. Year one. Gondor of the New Era. Oh my god. The fourth age April, chronology? Yeah. After the fall of Baradur. So I guess the fourth age starts with the crowning of the king, though, right? Right. Okay, so this would be the end of the third. We're supposed to put in Numenor or in Gondor it starts with the crowning of the king, but I don't think in the Shire they consider end of third age until after, after the, the scouring. Or no, it, they they do it when the ring bears leave, I guess. Logan completed the Lord of the Rings draft while staying at his son Michael's house in the village of Woodcote. <coughs> Big audit from mid August to mid September of nineteen forty eight. Created or produce an enormous amount of analytic and genealogical material for the novels of Pedicies. Yeah, no shit. God damn. Look at this, dog. Chronology of the Lord of the Rings after the fall of Baron Dillard continued. The heirs of Elendil. Oh. It's the house of Elendil. Oh my god, you guys. Some Dunedainery. Dunedainery. The sealed Arian. Where's Aarian, though? <laughs> There. She's some with Numenor. <laughs> she was forgotten. <laughs> Chieftains of the Dune. Oh my god, going all the way from here and there. There's even like a little Aaron. watermark where it smudged the ballpoint ink. That is cool. First G, second, third, fourth, fifth. Look at this. It's even got like when they're born, how long they live, and when they die. That's, for, that's freaking crazy. Genealogies. Arganui. Fun name. Most of these people are either guests of Bilbo's farewell party or their direct ancestors. Oh, is this a uh, Hobbit stuff? Hobbit genealogy? Yes. It's not a bunch of shit. <laughs> Beryllia, Buffin, Baggins, Mungo, Pansy, Ponto, Largo, Lily, Tanta, Mimo Mimosa. So there's a hobbit named Mimosa. Mimosa buns. They like to have some mimosas. 
So you got Tuk standing. Were, Bilbo's parents were Bungo and Belladonna. Belladonna Tuk and Bungo Baggins. Yeah. Or no, in the no, he's, he's named Drogo in the later. Uh, is it that Frodo's parents? Frodo set up Drogo? Oh, yes. I'm getting the two confused. Yep. Drogo and Primula. Randy Park. The long father tree of Master Samwise. Look at this. Oh, no way. Sam's family tree. That's something I have never seen. Oh, I want to take a picture of that so oh. bad. Oh, Jesus Christ. Tooks of great smiles. It's a Took family tree. Oh my god. Brandy Buck family also... tree. Oh my god. Brandy Bucks of Buckler. I love how they have crossovers too. Like there's you'll see people that are the same in both. Yep. <laughs> Hobbit long measures. One nail. Three nails equals a toe. Six rows equals a foot. Are you serious? Three feet equals one step or an L. Six feet or two steps is a long gait. What the fuck? We're literally is looking this? at Hobbit. Standardized measurements, guys, which I didn't know existed until just now, but that's okay. Oh, look, this is a, a doodle of uh, his uh, uh, map, his oh, hobbit map, with the oh, finger with pointing the finger at the side of the mountain. The mountain. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Who is this? This is a map of Great Britain that he drew, apparently. Is it so? This is big. Is it on that side? I don't Jeez. know. I'm not sure. It's an old map. Is this Gondolin? Looks like either that or Minas Tirith. Oh, it could be Minas Tirith. MT, probably Minas Tirith. I don't know the Tower of the Sun. Oh, yeah, here's a top down of Minas Tirith oh, with the Minolduin. And the levels and how they would have to get to the top, the road. Oh my god. Oh, are the gates offset? I never realized that. So in order to like take this city, you literally have to break the gate here and then move and have to fight your way all the way over to the next gate, which is not right in and front zigzag of Zigzag back and you forth. Zigzag through the layers through the top. Interesting. Really good uh, defense mechanism. The earliest sketch of Minas Tirith in late nineteen forty four. Plan of Minas Tirith, 1946. That is cool. So cool. Oh my god, guys, I wish we could take pictures for you. This sucks, you can't take pictures. <laughs> no. So they have a book uh, of the manuscript of all these things in it. We're going to have to buy one. We might have to buy that, yeah. It's got all of this stuff in it. A whole so book. I just see the word orc raids. <laughs> <laughs> Dorius. Oh, this is a map of Valerian. This is a map of Valerian. Orc raids down in the southeast. On a regular ass piece of notes of favor. Nope of favor. Brosselian, not Valerian. The first Silmarillion map, 1920s. Holy Christ. 1920? 1920s. 20s, somewhere so. in there. That is crazy. Yeah, apparently it wasn't called Beleriand at the time, it was called Brasselian. Alright. Oh, and here's something we recognize. This is the map. This is the two-tone map, guys. This is... Map. Is this really it? It's gotta be. This has gotta be it. This so is... We're looking at, so, if you guys have ever had like a first edition of one of the books, they have a two-tone map. Red and black. Red and black. And we're looking at the original right now. That's, this is a map that you see all the time. Like if you look up a map, if you just Google search a map of Middle Earth, this is what comes this up. One. This is this is it though. This is, holy shite. Wow. And he's even got notes written on it too. Oh, that's so cool. Holy fuck. This is weird. Hey, look at it. It's a like crease where he, mm -hmm. you can literally see the creases as where he folded it up. This is that exact map. I mean, this is blowing my mind. Yeah. Oh, here's a more sketched version of Middle Earth. Enidwaith. Rohan. It doesn't include Gondor. Let's go far enough south. Shine, so Eridor, Forlandon, Harlandon. The Ice Bay of Forshell. Three Mountains. Oh my god. 
Oh, here's just a uh, conventional signs and lettering used in field sketching. This is essentially what he what he based his maps off of. These oh, types. Oh, this is of, like his key. This is like his key. That's amazing. This yeah. is what he based his maps off of. This kind I of key. Remember when I yeah when I used to have to draw maps for school, I had to do that. That is so cool. Yeah. If um, if uh, Mrs. Zaskowski is listening to this right now, <laughs> she uh. She oh. taught me how to make maps, that's for fucking sure. Trials for the ring inscription. And uh, of the white tree and stars. This is from 1953. Oh, damn. oh that white tree and stars does not look very cool. <laughs> it does not look cool at all. Not nearly as cool as his finishing thing. It looks like a dead willow tree oh my almost. God, you guys, we're looking at this. Oh, I'm sorry. Hand drawn tree of a lendil, and it's uh, pretty derpy looking. Yeah, it's pretty sad compared to what, it, what we know it to be. That's kind of funny. <laughs> this uh, ring inscription, though, looks beautiful. Oh my god. He even like gritted the paper out a little bit to try to get it right. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, he even tried doing it. He practiced doing it with like shaky spit. Like wobbly, shaky script in one of these. And another one he practiced doing Tengwar with hard edges, which is weird. I suppose, yeah, you'd write differently depending on your situation. Right? Mm -hmm. The ring verse. Very cool. Version of the ring inscription in Elvish. Very cool. This one's from the 40s. Also from the 40s. This is toward the tail end of. Ring inscription appearing in later typescripts of The Lord of the Rings. The Shadow of the Past. Okay, this is typed out. Bring inscription again. Oh, this is, dude, this is from Shadow of the Past. So these must just be the varying uh, versions of the, of the ring inscription, just like the, greatest, the, the development. Uh, the greatest exposition scene of all time. Right? The Shadow of the Past. The Shadow of the Past. Absolutely. Oh, no way. It's uh, his uh, inscription of the, uh, the Door of Durin. We're looking That's at the Door of Durin. Beautiful. Yes multiple versions of it it looks like oh yeah multiple versions of the of the pictures on front the trees look a little bit different in each but otherwise it's more or less the same inscription on the west gate of moria first manuscript doors of duran first drawing doors of duran later drawing no he didn't he's a compass he's just bad his uh, arcs are hand. yeah he's just got a very good hand this is just wild I can't believe that we're seeing his hand written right now. This is still yeah, blowing my mind. It's like literally things he wrote. Oh, the inscription on Balin's tomb. So we got more Kuzduel. There, there we go. That's bright. Some runic scripts that Tolkien wrote on some paper. Cool. Some Kurt. Inscription on Balin's tomb from later manuscripts in 1940. Inscription on Balin's tomb from earlier manuscripts in 1941. Inscription on Balin tomb is the later typescript, early 1950s. So just the evolution of Balin's tomb text again. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like it's really changed at all, it's just... That's so cool. Oh man. And he's got his notes all over the damn place. We're looking at Coos dual history here, folks. Yeah, buddy. Better believe it. Oh, I'm so sad. So we're already moving on to the final room. Final room of the exhibit, guys. And this is been amazing so far. Section 5. Glimpsing Other Worlds. As evidence in previous sections, attempting to divide Tolkien's manuscripts into textual and visual categories, there are numerous examples of Tolkien working in a primarily visual mode, sometimes in the interest of visualizing elements for his own internal narrative. So Blair this though. section looks like this is all art nice. from within his manuscripts. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, no, no pictures, huh? God damn it. The shores of fairy, watercolor, ink, and pencil on paper. May 1915. Yeah. Jesus. The University of Oxford. That is beautiful. Look at those colors. Bright blues, purples, yellows, reds. So May 1915, is this like... When did he join the army? Do you remember what year it was? I don't. So it went from 1914 to 1919, so... Yeah, I wonder if you'd enlisted by this time. 
I don't imagine he'd have uh, paint and colored water pencils with him in a while. No, I think, yeah, I think this was done at Oxford, but yeah, I don't think he had watercolor in the trenches. <laughs> Down on the trenches. Ooh, Glaurung sets forth to seek tour in September 1927. That's pretty cool. This looks like we've seen this picture before. It's in the same style as the uh, dust cover to The Hobbit. Where have I seen this picture Glaurung. before? Yeah, that's Glower. This might have been in one of the Silmarillions that we have. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it's Glowerung emerging from, um, from the kingdom of Nargothrond. Nargothrond, yeah. Nargothrond. Tree of Amalian. Color pencil and pencil on paper. Is this that tree that uh, lives in Lindan and if he dies? <laughs> And all, all the elves dead. Oh my god, guys. It's real. It's all real. Oh, how pissed off would you be if like, Bezos had it all right? If we came here and we found out that that was like an early. I would be so angry. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'd be so upset with just everything. And this guy just had a steady ass hand. Like, for sure. So, this is called the Tree of Amalian. One of his most significant uh, examples of trees that he used in stories. Often related to his story, uh, Leaf by Niggle, and I G G L E. You'll say that that Leaf by Niggle is awesome. I've never read it though. We'll have to check it out. It's like his, uh, I was just looking at a list of the best non-Middle Earth Tolkien works, and people rank that at number one. Really? Mm -hmm. The Herbal of Apulius Barbarus. Yeah, I recognize this. this is 1925. Well, this is uh, an open book. I can't quite tell what's being written there, but it's got some artwork of some Latin, plants. Isn't it? Is it? It's like lands. It's got some artwork with some plants and some yeah. roots and a snake. Very cool. Line. Very cool. At least we can read Latin. I, it's funny to think all these <laughs> ancient languages you get to Latin, you're like, ah, oh, so comfortable with this one. <laughs> In the 18 years between the publication of Lord of the Rings and his death, Tolkien exerted a great effort in fleshing out the visual material, uh, the visual and material culture of Arda. Cures of interest included decorative patterning and heraldry. That's beautiful. I had no idea he put so much time into his full on art. This is amazing. How many hours do you think Tolkien spent? Just in his office, like it's a, making things, making it's a what he what he did for fun, man. It's content. Just, he's just like us, just making content. <laughs> he's just like us, constantly making content. Life is content. Life is content. Yes. I was talking about heraldry here. Elvish heraldry. Oh, we got some shields and some houses. It looks like. Hell yeah. That's really cool. Oh my god. Is this a one of his versions of a Silmarillion? Oh, well, these are the early uh, heraldry things. Who is this for? Men's of Throne have long delighted in stories of the heroes and heralds in the other days. Ancient emblem representing the innovation of the Silmarils in the light of the trees. So these are his Silmarils. This is how he oh. pictured them. Adriel's device, a cornflower pattern. Which is cool. They look different than I think they would. At least on the on the uh, herald very thing. Interesting. So his so Vulcan's version of a Silmaril. He's got three in a tree. And they're just circles with I don't think flowers in the middle. Well, it kind of looks like flowers or eight pointed stars in the middle of a circle. Yeah. It's all white. That's really pretty. Well, this one's on uh some early covers of the Silver Lion. A heraldic device for Luthien Tenuvial. Oh, yeah. Second like heraldic device for Luthien Tenuvial. Heraldic devices for the house yeah, Finarfin and Fingolfin. Uh, before people could read. Yeah, they so used to use them to so read. So this is her, the houses of Finarfin? The house of Fingolfin. These are their symbols of their house. This is amazing. It's amazing. You see Luthien? Have you ever seen this one before? I've seen this on the cover of old copies of the Silver I have, and I didn't know what it was. Now yeah. we do. Now we do. These were all, I had no idea that so many yeah, of these were the actually... Sets, one of the boxes I have has all these on the sides, and it says who they are, which, uh... I've got to find this somewhere. I'll, I'll show it to you. 
that is really cool. The, the heralding or the her heraldic device of Luthien. Yeah, guys, we're Hubble looking at Christian somebody. Wisdom. Beautiful. Somebody asked us on the Christmas special who basically which one of these we like the best, and we were too drunk to actually understand the question. What they were asking. <laughs> We'll have to get back to that question. Oh, troll! Trolls in the hill. This is from the Hobbit. I've yeah, never seen dude. this picture. I've never seen this picture before. Beautiful. It's like a landscape shot with the cloudy sky, and you can see it's, there's only one part of this that uses any color, and that's some red off in the trees where the fire is supposed to be able what to be fire. be visible from the trolls. Oh, and here's his Bilbo comes to the, uh, or, well, Bilbo and the dwarves and the. Going down the river in the barrels. I've seen this. Oh yeah, there before. we go. Got the barrels. Bilbo comes to the huts of the Raft Elves. 1937. Watercolor pencil and white body color on paper. This is beautiful. Oh my god! I want to touch it. I want to take a picture of it. I want to lick it. I know. I want to lick it. Oh, there's more of these symbols. Ooh, these are heraldry too. Heraldic devices for Eärendil and Gilgalad, I've seen and this in other yeah. undefined. Interesting. Gilgalad, one with the star. Eärendil, the one with the one star that looks like a similar one, and then another random one with a bunch of stars. That's Gilgalad <laughs> over there. Yep, Gilgalad. Gilgalad. Numenorean carpet. Look at that. What? Yeah, dude. A she Numenorean just decided carpet. to take the time to draw this beautiful artwork just because he wanted a picture of a Numenorean carpet. You guys, this guy is psycho? something else. Some something might say else. he's a psycho. Yeah. But we are psychos. But he's our favorite psycho, <laughs> if that's the case. <laughs> Well, it's even got a stamp on that. Well, that, yeah, I was gonna cool. say that's on. That's, uh, a postcard. that's on a postcard. Oh, yeah, it's straight up. And on the other side of the envelope, he's got more. He just doodles on stuff all the time. 1960 Tolkien's friend Gregory and Macdonald approached him with an unusual request. Macdonald admired Tolkien's penmanship and asked if he would write out a copy of Hilaire Belloc's Ballad, which Macdonald intended to send to Jasna Gora Monstery. Side of a famous shrine to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Okay. So we had him write a prayer, essentially, a ballad. Very cool. Just imagine, like, writing all this stuff, not thinking it's all that cool, and then, like, 100 years later, there's a fucking bit like this, where they have, like, everything you've ever written. Join the muster. Marquette University is gathering 6,000 audio interviews from Tolkien fans, one for each of the riders of That's Rohan so cool. for the King Theoden led to the aid of Gondor. And we know exactly how many that are, right? Six thousand. Six thousand. I wonder if we can get in on this. If we do this, yeah. Only one interview room is staffed. That's crazy. Look at this massive oh, yeah. timeline. Take a picture? Yes. Of that. How does it work? You literally can just take a picture of it with your camera, and your camera will recognize its QR code and pull up whatever it needs to. Well, part of this final room is a giant archive room with a huge timeline that spans the entire wall. Yeah, so this last leg here is the archive room where there's all sorts of ginormous touch screens and like viewing screens to look through all of these uh, images of some of his old transcripts. This is amazing. This is really cool. They've got a giant copy of the Lord of the Rings that we, you can just reference while you're here. It's like all three put, books put into one. That's really cool. Yeah, why not? Interesting. I feel like I'm at an old... That's oh, microfiche. Yeah. yeah. I, remember. I feel like I'm at an old library or something and I'm just oh, looking yeah. through one of those... Uh, I don't know what you'd call this. What did you call it? Yeah, microfiche. Yeah, my, it's microfiche. I don't know why they call it this. Microfilm. Yeah, you spin it there. Oh, cool. Okay. So I'm spin, uh, spinning the knob here, and we've just got... Uh, so are we in Moria? Giant projected images of some of his old transcripts popping up in front of us on this screen. Lord of the Rings, Book 2, Chapter 10, The Breaking of the Fellowship. Mm. Printer's typescript. Look at that. Does it That's have a so year? Cool. 
Yeah, RT34 1910. Is that what that means? Um, 3410? No, there's no yeah, way. No. This is really cool. I wonder how much there is. It said they have uh, Journey of the Nine Companies. So it's the um, 12 of the most beloved lines passages from Tolkien's masterpiece. Oh, cool. Okay. That's according to a Facebook poll from 21, 2021. Page from the Book of Mazarbo, colored pencil and ink. Wow. Oh, there we go. That's cool. I think we saw this up on the wall, actually. Yeah, we saw the original one up on the wall. Just crossed out. Yeah, I'm done with this. Two pages from the Book of Mazarbo. That's really cool. Translation of the Book of Mazarbo. Oh my god, dude. This guy had nothing but time to write, apparently. Yeah, dude. Weren't you, a, weren't you a college professor, man? Didn't you have shit to get done? I wonder if he was a good teacher. Ink drawings of ruins at Balin's tomb. Oh, here's the... We just looked at these look at on these the wall. Too. This is the uh, Doors of Moria. This is some of Balin's tomb inscriptions. Okay, so we've seen most of this. Yeah, it's just on the microfilm, which is really cool. That's really to cool. To analyze. If you guys have never used the microfiche machine, go to an old library and check it out. Very cool. All right, yeah, folks. Cool. Well, that's, that's pretty much the entire exhibit. That's the whole thing. Yeah, we might uh, have a few other snippets here and there to throw in, but we hope you enjoyed us going through and experiencing this for the first yeah, time. This, this was fun. amazing. This was an experience, my friends. If any of you can make your way out to uh, the Art of the Transcript exhibit. Uh, mm, Art of the Manuscript. Art of the Manuscript. <laughs> Art of the, <laughs> the Transcript. Art of the Manuscript exhibit. Yeah, if Tolkien. you were in the Midwest at all, make your, get your ass over here. This is you. absolutely fantastic. And today was even free day, so... It was free. It was free day, so come check it out, everyone. Um, well, that's all we got for you right now, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I'm Joel Aaron. And I'm Danny J. Keep on talking, guys. And this has been Keep on Talking from the Hagerty Museum of Art in beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Aure and Tuva. Aure and Tuva.